Hello. Hi, guys. Hey. <laughs> well, I'm still back. Woo. Not only that, this week we have such a fun thing that we're doing at the service yeah. on Friday night. Nice. We've got some incredible students. Do you want to share with us what you're thinking about them? I did. Because what I was thinking about was, first of all, um, how much I underappreciated being a student as a, a mere youth that when I was in my 30s in cantorial school, I realized, you know, a, uh, past 20 years old, it's not so easy learning, not so easy. Um, and so I have this great respect for um, all of us that go back to learning, that are a part of lifelong learning, that retire and take courses well into their 80s and 90s, I mean, those are the people that really understand what life's all about. And, you know, there is a special blessing that, that we say, and, and it's part of a tradition that we have here at Temple Sholem, which is our 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 daily Kaddish de Rabbanon, where we really acknowledge those that came before us, you know, our, our sort of original teachers, the people in our lives, uh, people that have influenced us. And so, I have had the joy of teaching our intro to Judaism classes, our taste of Judaism classes, and other kinds of adult ed uh, here at the synagogue. And I always get to utilize, and I feel like we've been on a little bit of a Debbie Friedman love fest recently, which I think is never a problem. Um, you but you had a love fest? It's been more intense than ever. Yeah. I love it. You know what I mean? It's been like a Debbie Friedman Burning Man fest, like that kind of thing. It's been that intense. That'd be a lot of fun. And I know, she'd be so much fun to dance with a Burning Man. Anyway, so I digress. This is her version and her way of taking that gorgeous uh, Hebrew extended Kaddish that we say for our teachers, for students, and for ourselves as students, um, and she sings this sweet little song um, that literally goes, um, and I'll sing it just very gently. For my teachers and their students and the students of their students, we ask for peace and loving kindness and let us say, Amen. And so I have a feeling we may hear that again this week. But until then, I wanted to hear from my greatest and my favorite, Rabbanan, my dear rabbis. What are your favorite, what's a favorite teaching moment, a favorite teacher you had, a favorite student, um, a memory of teaching, anything that comes to mind at all? Huh. I love that Cat Debbie Friedman tune as well. I mean, I don't think there's another tune for Kadisha Rabbanon anyway. Uh, maybe there is, and I'm sorry, whoever wrote that other one. Um, what I'm really thinking about in terms of teaching is uh, the, the ways that we teach our teenagers. Uh, and so much of it uh, becomes this mix of formal and informal teaching. And man, informal teaching is a skill. This ability to be a role model to someone who doesn't know they're looking for a role model uh, and to model like, yeah, this is what Judaism says about without saying this is what Judaism says about. Um, and so I am, I'm just always in awe of our religious school teachers who do that mix of formal and informal, of our youth group uh, leaders who do that. Um, and like everyone who works at camp doing that because doing that at camp and uh, playing kickball in a Jewish way, um, those, those moments are some of the best, the best ways of teaching or, or some of the best moments of teaching that I've experienced. Thanks, Cantor. 
I love it. I want to go on with that that teen theme because I, I have to say that that I feel like the teens at Temple Sholem are are the rock stars of Temple Sholem, and I feel like our our youth look to them as their as really their rock stars, and then we as adults look at them as our rock stars, and so our teens fill this amazing role um, where there are these amazing leaders that I feel like we all learn so much from all the time, and I was thinking about a time. So one of the things that I was doing when we were all in person is that every year I. I would come into classes and we would do a mensch circle. And at the mensch circle, uh, we would go around and really be able to take a Jewish teaching and then be able to share from our own lives and our own selves like a little bit more. And I'll say that it doesn't matter um, what I would say. I think it matters just, you know, that presence, that loving presence and asking big questions and being there. I love that. But our students will always only be as open as our teens are in those settings. And I love those teens who are so brave to be able to share something real that they're going through that then opens up our kids to say, oh, I can share from my own life. Oh, and there's this, this Jewish teaching that I thought was like so irrelevant. And then, oh, I see how it actually starts to kind of re, uh, recenter myself that I can see then how do I want to continue to grow? And uh, so I just want to say it happened again and again and again over these last few years um, with our teens. And I just each and every time I'm in awe and I am so very grateful. They make our teachings come alive. Yeah. Cancer, what about you? Uh, well, I was actually thinking about what an obnoxious teen I was. So I was thinking about how many times, how many, many, many teachers in the past that I need to sing this song to. <laughs> um, um, I, I used to be uh, such a naughty student. I remember uh, one thing I used to do, and again, like I'm sp supposed to be talking about blessing, but here's my memory. When I was in junior high school, there was a particular class. Uh, I just wasn't into the subject, so I got kicked out of the class a lot. Not from being mean to anybody. I just want you to know it was from being funny. Just, <laughs> just, you know, just, just so that it's official. And before I would leave the classroom, I would turn the lights off so that the teacher would have to walk all the way to the door to turn him back on. Well, oh, that wasn't mean. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I look back now and I think about, first of all, I've had, so that you know, I've taught Hebrew school for many years and there've been plenty of children that have tormented me in honor of myself. Mm -hmm. um, but I have treated that particular student um, with tremendous amounts of patience and humor and um, warmth and understanding because I know that kid that's just squeezing out as much attention as they can possibly get until they have to leave the room. You know what I love about that too? <laughs> Like, I just, I love how I'm reminded that sometimes we have to think about the people that these kids are growing into and how are we going to plant the seeds to be able for them later to come back to, to see how that's blossomed in them. But that if we treat their behavior and we don't see the full person in their becoming, then I think we just mess up. And I love that your teachers did not mess up with you nope. because you are extraordinary <laughs> and really one of my very favorite teachers. Well, and you're some of my kindest and most tolerant and loving teachers. So, well, I mean, and that's the thing about Rabbi Gelman. I love that he shared about, you know, teens and, you know, and who have those gifts with teens. And it's, it's fun to say to you, Rabbi Gelman, you're one of those. It's true teachers who can mix that informal and formal and reach our reach our teens our adults and our kids i love it they only respond to openness and honesty that's true hmm. yep. 
Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you much. Guys. Nice, bro. Thanks.